Hi everyone, this is Catherine Busby. I am introducing you to my four module micro course on ecological statistics. So um, I've, I thought of this course idea because um, I've noticed that in my own experience in trying to figure out how to be an ecologist, there's certain things that keep coming up, certain things that I keep needing to know how to do, but um, Nobody told me that, so I've kind of had to just observe and pick up patterns and figure out what I need to learn and then learn it. And I thought, why not just tell students, if you want to be an ecologist, here are some things that you should just face because they're going to come up, especially in statistics. Um, there's certain tests that you will pretty much be encountering again and again, or if you're not encountering them in your own work, then you're going to hear other people talk about them in their presentations, and it's just good to know how those things work. So I wanted people to be able to um, first to understand what those tools are at their disposal and then second of all to feel like they can access those things, they can actually execute these tests. Um, I know I had had statistics courses in my past but I always felt like they were kind of hypothetical like oh let's say you were doing this study on patients with a disease and you have a treatment and I'm like I'm not even considering doing that. So I, I didn't intend to zone out, but I would kind of zone out because I didn't feel like the statistics I was doing were applicable to any real questions I had. So um, I want people to feel like they can utilize tools that really help them answer their own ecological questions. So that's, um, that's kind of how I envisioned this course and the purpose I thought it would serve. And um, I, I do think that this is a course where students should already have a statistics background. And if they already have some R background, then that would be even more preferable. I realized over the course of thinking about this design um, that it, I've already split it into more modules than I had originally envisioned. Oops. And I think I might end up splitting it mm -hmm. even more. I think these things might take some time. So um, I'm considering splitting it up into maybe a five or even a six module course. So key to this course design is that students should be able to do those methods that are most important for them to know in the field of ecology. And that's how I came to this ecological statistics micro course. So um, I thought that the most important things to be able to do in ecological statistics were, first of all, just a solid understanding of the basics. So um, I wanted students to understand certain things that would make their statistical um, design go astray. So this led me to the objective, students can discuss the shortcomings of common statistical mistakes. Then I think it's really important to know what question you're asking and then to plan your experiment based on the statistics that you'll need to be doing so that you won't try to later do a statistical test and go, oh, if only I had measured such and such. So the second most important thing I could think of was how I designed objective number two, which is that students will be able to design an experiment with the statistics in mind. Um, then I think it's super important to make excellent visuals. Visuals are the first step in um, understanding what's, what patterns are going on in your system. And then uh, they inform your next steps. So, and they also communicate your science really well. So a main objective that I had was for students to be able to interpret, visualize, and transform their own data. And then the fourth module, or the fourth objective, I guess, choosing an appropriate statistical test um, was one that I think might get split into more modules in the future just because there's so many tests and a lot of them are quite different from each other. Um, but I wanted people to be able to try them. So in this course design, the idea is to introduce a lot of tests and to introduce resources for understanding what those tests are trying to accomplish and then giving the students the opportunity to choose their own question and choose the appropriate test that they would like to actually execute. So they will do a test and it won't be necessarily an easy test, but um, they should be able to uh, figure out how to apply some of these statistics. So 
The following four modules are based on those four objectives. So in module number one, we'll just go over the basics. Um, it's going to be kind of condensed, and in a way I think that's a good thing because sometimes I think courses start off with a review of the basics and they end up getting really, uh, it seems like it's easy to students who have already heard the content and they believe the whole course will be easy and they kind of slack off. I've been guilty of this as a student myself. So. Um, so this is a dense refresher of the basics, and there will be plenty of time for students to kind of um, build up if they're getting stuck on something at this stage. So, um, so we'll go over stuff they should already know from basic statistics, including understanding the difference between type 1 and type 2 error, understanding p-values and power, um, understanding distributions, and then transforming distributions as needed, and then they should understand um, things like inflation bias, uh, violating test assumptions and multiple testing, p-hacking, um, things that could lead them astray without them even realizing it, they should know about to begin with. So then in module two, they should be able to design with the stats in mind. So um, they need to know what their question is. They need to know how many things they're going to test and how many tests they'll have to do. Uh, the type of experiment that will allow them to collect the information they need to do those tests, and they need to know what their treatment groups are. Um, and they need to be thinking about hypotheses too. And for this module, they're going to actually do a power analysis and figure out a sample size needed to do an experiment. And uh, they're going to be able to draw out the design of their experiment. So then in module three, we'll do data visualization. Um, we're going to cover how you do that using the R package ggplot, which is a just a foundational package, although it's a little bit tricky to use, so I wanted to take some time on it, but it's flexible and it can make amazing images. Um, so I just, I have the, the basic goal of students being able to execute some code that will create a graph based on a data set in R. And for most of these things, I'm thinking of using the iris data set, which is built into R so they don't have to go and load in any data or try to find anything. Um, it's already known to be a nice data set that can get you some interesting results. So, um, so students will have the option of using Iris, but if they feel like they're advanced or they want to try something else, then they can use their own data. That's an option. So um, there will be different levels for different students, and that's okay. And then um, module four, as you can see, there are just a lot of tests listed here. And while I think I could do an introduction to each of them and let students choose and learn more on their own and using the resources in the course, uh, I'm not sure if it's, if it's realistic for me to think that students would absorb the details of all these different tests if they weren't already familiar with them. So I'm, I'm thinking about retooling this module and like I said, maybe splitting it up. But this is kind of the final project here. Students are going to ask a question either about the IRIS data set or about their own stuff. If they wanna actually work on the stats for their own research, that'd be pretty cool. Um, but then they're going to choose the appropriate test and perform it in R. And then they're going to turn in their results to me. So those are the four modules. We have some resources. Um, there's two textbooks, The Art of Statistics, How to Learn from Data, and then Discovering Statistics Using R. And these are just two really accessible books that I found really useful as I'm trying to learn these things myself. So um, because I've referred to them so much, I thought students could use them too. I know that not all students can access things, uh, be it for financial reasons or whatever, and so I was I was thinking I would just upload scans of the appropriate chapters, but I would recommend that they buy the book as well. Um, and then StatQuest with Josh Starmer is a YouTube channel that's actually great at breaking down the stats to make it really um, accessible for people who don't, like me, come naturally to the world of statistics. So um, I have recommended videos for each of the modules to go with that. And then I also have some other um, resources, including pre-recorded lectures. So I would have to record a lecture for each module. Um, I think I could do that as long as I make it evergreen content so that it doesn't 
have to be redone all the time. I know it takes a while to <laughs> pre-record lectures. And then we'll have weekly Zoom hours, which I think will be really important because I anticipate people having problems with R. Um, they'll be given annotated R code templates. So for those who are working with the IRIS data set and may not feel as comfortable um, wading out into the deep waters of R on their own, they can, uh, they can use the, the R code that I'm going to supply or they can modify it from there so that they won't, be, they won't be lost. I really feel that just executing code, being able to open it, execute each line and see what it does, even if you don't understand it at the beginning, that leads to understanding in the end. And it leads to you being able to take what I've given you and, and tweak it and experiment with it. So it's a, it's a tool and it's a resource um, that's helped me and I think it would help others too. So that's why I've provided these annotated R code templates. Um, and hopefully these resources will be enough for students to accomplish the assignments. But I'm, I'm curious to hear what people viewing this overview think because um, part of me thinks that there's a lot of content here kind of hiding that I'm, I'm not realizing would take some scaffolding and I'm not allowing time for that. Um, on the other hand, students who already have a sense of statistics might be really bored. So I'm curious what people think about the level of this course and whether it should be expanded or what. And then um, this is a busy slide, but it's just summarizing the assignments. Um, overall course total points are out of a thousand. So I've, I've raised that from before based on feedback from Shelby and others of you. And uh, so each module has at least one associated assignment. And then the last module has a final project. <laughs> Apologize for the background noise. I've had multiple takes of this recording and I just can't get rid of it. And um, I've, I've attached additional content here so you can review my actual uh, content for two modules and the course syllabus. So you can see that um, attached in the other links here. And I would love to hear your feedback and ideas to make this a better course. So thank you so much for your time and have a great day.